Hey guys, so I'm sure you've all seen these really cool time-lapse videos on YouTube, social media, and other places. I want to show you today how you can create those if you own a 3D printer and a DSLR camera. It's really easy. Alright, so to print time-lapses, basically what you do is you insert some post-processing code in Cura, and what that does is after each layer finishes printing on whatever model or file that you're printing, it moves your X axis all the way over to its zero position. So it moves this whole assembly out of the way and it moves your build plate, which is your Y axis forward. And moving all of this and all of this out of the way gives you a full view of whatever you're printing and allows you to snap a picture of it at that point. All right, I'm gonna show you how to mount the switch. So we're gonna be using this little small switch that I picked up on Amazon. I'll drop a link down below and we're going to be mounting it right here. So we know this is the position that it moves to and you can change that position. Like if you wanted to 3D print some kind of bracket and mount it on the right side where the tensioner is, um, you know, and this probably applies for most printers too. You, you can do pretty much the same. I want that roller centered on this bracket and I want it to click. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a drill bit the size of the holes in here and I'm gonna push it down through, and I'm gonna spin it with my hand. Now if you look, you'll see two little indentations there. That's where we're gonna drill two really small holes, and we're gonna take a couple small screws right here. I picked these up at Home Depot. I think they were like $1.28 for this 10 pack. So this is basically a remote camera trigger. This end plugs into the side of your DSLR. This actually has two different functions, like there's a hold on here or the push button to take a picture. And then all I'm using for a camera, I'm, I have this Canon Rebel T6. Right on the side of the camera, this top port right here, you can actually see a little image of the remote here. That's where that remote cable plugs into. So essentially all we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what wire is inside of this cable activate um, the picture taking portion of the camera. We'll just remove the two screws here. Look at that, we'll cut the wire. We'll strip the wire back. We're gonna solder the wire to the switch on the common and normally open contact. So we're gonna loosen up these two Allen bolts right here and take the tension off that motor before we take the motor out. All right, so I took the home switch wire out just so we don't damage it when we pull this off. So behind the sticker, there's four small Allens. And if you still have the tool kit that came with your ender, they have an Allen in there that fits. All right, there's your home switch. We wanna make sure we don't interfere with that. All right, now we're gonna take that small drill bit and we're gonna drill. And we gotta be careful we don't wanna drill into that board that's in there. So that's what it looks like. Then we take our screws here and we're gonna thread them through here. Now this fit is really, really tight here. This hole is just small enough where these threads on this screw is gonna catch here. All right, now this is what it looks like. There's the home switch for the axis. There's the one that we added. And all we have to do is connect. And it's really hard to see, but you'll see on these switches that have three terminals, you'll see NC, NO, and C. C is common, NO is normally open, and C is normally closed. So between common, and normally closed, that contact is always closed until this is hit. Uh, between C and normally open, it's open until this is hit. And that, these are the two that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna mount this back in now. And then we can push our sticker back on. Gonna reinsert the connector for the home switch. Snap that in. Could hear both of these switches hitting. So I guess we're gonna use the wheel. I actually mounted this upside down. It was supposed to contact the side here, but the wheel's fine too. All right, now onto the remote. So what we'll do is we'll just cut this. So we'll strip all three, we'll hook this into the camera, and we can touch them together and see which one causes it to take the picture. All right, so we have the wiring plugged in to the camera here. I got the wire stripped back, and we're gonna test and see which is what. And it looks like red and black. That one doesn't do anything. That's, I think 
white and black is like autofocus. So red and black are the two. And we'll test that. Let's take a picture of the printer. All right. And that confirms that those are the wires for this particular camera and this remote. All right, so we have a Saturn iron heating up here, and then we're gonna connect the wires through the common and normally open contacts. So there's a little hole in each of these. So we're gonna put that through, and we're gonna bend the wire over, then we're gonna take our soldering iron and a little bit of solder, and we're gonna heat this terminal up. You don't wanna get this too hot because you will damage the switch. And you see, we got a nice solder joint there. It only takes a little bit of solder to get that in there. Do the same thing for the red wire here. All right. Now those are on there. We have a heat shrink. And then we'll hit it with a lighter really quick. You don't want to hold it on here too long because you don't want to melt anything. So those are protected now. Plug this back in. Camera's on. Let's activate the switch. Oh, we actually have it on auto. So that's another thing I'm gonna show you. You wanna have it on manual focus. So you have your camera on a tripod, you focus it in to your print. When it gets done with the layer, like you're probably your first layer may be out of focus um, until you get it set. But once you get it set, you should be good. Um, and you wanna be on manual here so you don't have flash, but look at that. And we can set it so it doesn't do like a burst or continuous, and this is what I mean. You can set this so it takes one picture instead of continuous. So if the pause time for this access is too long, it doesn't just sit there busting out a bunch of pictures. So it only takes one every time it comes back. So we're good to go basically here. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to add the time-lapse G-code to your print. So basically all you do is in Cura, this is Creality Slicer, but Cura is the same thing. You go to your post-processing, modify G-code. This will be a little bit different, I think, in Prusa Slicer um, or some of the other ones that are out there. And when you come in here, there won't be anything set in here. All you need to do is click on Add Script and go down in your list here, search for Time Lapse. And then click on Time Lapse. It adds all of the settings in here. And now I'll explain these settings real quickly. So the trigger camera command m240 that's the actual g-code that that tells it to move to these particular settings so pause length that's how long it's going to stay at the commanded position for your feed rate is how fast it gets there and then you have park print head we want that checked and then we're going to park the print head at zero millimeters on the x-axis and basically all that's doing is it's moving the print head all the way over to the left side. And then print head Y is actually your build plate. So 190 millimeters is gonna extend your build plate out, not all the way, but pretty much all of the way. And then all you do is hit close, click on slice. It's gonna add that G code to your file. You just save this to um, wherever you want to, save it to your SD card. It's saved and then you just pop this in your printer and you're good to go. All right. So once again, we're on manual focus on our lens. I'm on the flash off mode on this particular camera. It may be different on like a Nikon or something, but this is a Canon, right? And we just moved over, it hit that switch and took a picture. So all you need to do is after that very first layer, or you can even kind of kind of wing it before it finishes that first layer, try to get everything in focus. And you can just view on, you know, through your viewfinder or on the camera screen and see if that is in focus for each picture. And then basically you walk away. And then make sure to check out that link I dropped earlier in the video, and I'll show you how to stitch all of the images together from the camera and make one of the time-lapse videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. Until next time.